can take you all at one time. Lawson. What? I gotta practice. Um, you have one fencing lesson. Exactly why I can't stop now. Even for a story? Oh. Right! Ugh. Hey there, I'm Lawson, foremost fencing expert to be and bringer of fantastic stories. Like the one I've got today from my aunt's new neighbor, Aria. Aria and her family just moved to a new town and nothing feels normal yet. Aria's like, I miss our old house. And Isaiah says, I miss my tree house. And at the very same time, they say, I'm bored. And dad reminds them, you know, kids, only now, Arya and Isaiah know exactly how this one goes. Only boring people are bored. Because they've heard it so many times, they could say it in their sleep. Only boring people are bored. So Arya looks around for ideas and she spots the giant stack of moving boxes. And she announces, Isaiah, I'm going to make you a castle. And Isaiah shouts, huzzah. Now Arya plans to get started on the castle after lunch, but there's so many boxes, she's not sure where to start. And by that evening, the stack seems bigger. And by the next morning, it's the Mount Everest of boxes. By then, Isaiah demands, where's my castle? Because he's got a dragon to fight. So Arya finds her dad and she says, where do I start? And dad's like, well, make a plan. So Arya thinks hard and writes down the steps. Number one, create a blueprint. Number two, collect supplies. She needs scissors, glue, colored tape, marker, goblet, giant turkey leg, elf ears, and of course, cardboard boxes. And now it's on to number three, construct. And at last, the castle is finished. And they all shout, huzzah! So kids, Remember, there's more than one way to recycle your cardboard. And also, that commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. On God! Where's a dragon when you need one? I should find him. See you guys next time! For me, you're good. You hold my future. You're working all the time. You're the mountain mover. From sunrise to sunset, till the sun comes back up again. You're by my side. You started a good work in me. I know that you will complete it. You will see. You are my future, you are 
It's always been my dream to be a street loser. <laughs> Going down steep inclines at incredible speeds while lying on my back, feeling the wind in my back. And today is the day that dream comes true. Nothing is gonna get in my way. <laughs> mm. Oh, I forgot my helmet! <laughs> John! Oh, oh, Brandon! Brandon, thank you for rescuing me! I can't do it! I'm so scared, I can't be a street loser! Well, if it's any consolation, John, you'll always be a loser to me. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The So-and-So Show. I am Brandon. And I am John. Chew your words. Chew your uh, words. We've got a great day planned for you. Isn't that right, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah is German for yes, in case you were wondering. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> can't loop, can't loop a lot. Can't a loop, can't loop a lot. We have a very special guest coming up on the show, and John is a little nervous about Ms. it. Miss Millicent Protzig, it's, my theater teacher. Mm -hmm. Theater! Theater! <laughs> That's right. She'll, theater! She'll be here in a minute. Uh huh. I recently auditioned for a community theater production of War and Peace, the musical, and I got cast in a role, so I need some help with my enunciation. Enunciation, huh? I'm. I'm pretty good at that, but why don't you, just in case, explain what enunciation is to the folks out there. All right. It is the practice of clearly pronouncing your words so they are easy for everyone to hear and understand. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? It is the practice I'm of- I'm kidding. Oh. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. have arrived. Oh, uh, come on in and have a seat. Nonsense! When you sit, you lose all of your energy. Everyone stand! Oh, oh. Hello, Ms. Protzig. Oh, Jonathan, it is so good to see you. I hear you need help with your enunciation. <laughs> he sure does. What was that? I was just saying that, that he sure... Uh, uh, dear boy, I cannot understand a word that you're saying. I, I, I do need help with enunciation, Ms. Pratzig. It appears that you're not the only one. <laughs> Wait, are you referring to me? No idea what you're saying. No, I just... Yeah, shh! Prattle no longer, my weak-lipped friend. It is time to play the ancient theater game known as... Spittle Spattle! Spittle Spattle! This exercise will allow you to let your salivary glands and your vocal folds go. Salivary glands? I will give you a phrase to say. You will take a sip of water 
and then proceed to say the phrase as distinctly as possible. Why? What did he say? He said, why? Well, every good stage actor knows that the more you spit when you speak, the more clearly understood you will be. Oh. Again, no clue. I just said, oh. Let us begin. Take a sip. And repeat after me. Bombastic prepositions. Bombastic prepositions. Bombastic prepositions. prepositions. Again, again. Oh, okay. Bombastic prepositions. Bombastic prepositions. You both need to use your lips, your lungs, and your loudness more. Take another sip. Second phrase. Pumpernickel pretzel bites. Pumpernickel pretzel bites. Pumpernickel pretzel bites. Oh, 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 much, much better. <laughs> now, one more. Mm -hmm. Fifty-five feet of frivolous, flimsy flapjacks. Mm. Of frivolous, flimsy flapjacks. Fifty-five feet of frivolous, flimsy flapjacks. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, let's see who won. Oh, how can you tell? Shh, just let her do her thing. Well, clearly, Jonathan is the more advanced expectorator. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks, Miss Protzig. He's what? What? Come on. I'm the best spitter. Indeed you are. You are fully prepared for your upcoming production. By the by, mm. what part did you get? Oh, um, I'm tree number two. Tree number two. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as I say, there are no small parts. Only I exit stage right. Oh. Wow, wasn't that great? What? It's What is up? Kellen! Kellen! Whoa! Brandon, I've never heard you speak so so clearly. Really? Chalk it up to the genius of Miss Protzig. What have you got for us, Kellen? Man, I mean really clear. Anyway, today we're talking about a very important practice that everyone needs to learn. I'm talking about prayer. When it comes to praying, Jesus set a great example for us. He never missed an opportunity to spend time alone with his heavenly Father. Jesus even taught his disciples how to pray. Today, we call that the Lord's Prayer. What is, oh no. Glad you came, glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow by blow of the Bible story. On the Mel of Solomon, story recap. Buddy, so glad to have you back on my show. I'm Melv Solomon, and this handsome fella tickling the ivories right over here is my brother-in-law, Greg. Say hello, Greg. <laughs> Always the scene stealer, that Greg. You're a scene stealer, am I right? <laughs> How could he not be with that handsome mug? Hey, Melv. Yeah, Kellen, what's going on, me compadre? Uh, just trying to teach everyone about the Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer? I love the Lord's Prayer. Say no more, Kellen. I'd be happy to jump in with a little ditty from time to time. Don't have to ask me twice. But I didn't ask you once. Ah! So Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. Jesus replied, when you pray, this is what you should say. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. 
So when you pray, you can start by telling God how amazing he is. Beautiful words for a beautiful ditty. Hit it, Greg. Greg. Greg! I have a handsome mug. <laughs> Stayed up a little late watching the telly, didn't you? I knew it. Play the tune. That's the one. God, you're great. God, you're awesome. When you made the universe, you weren't playing opossum. You're the best, you're the top, you're the cream of the crop. But I'm still confused why you made mosquitoes. Back to you, Kellen. All right. Next, Jesus told his disciples to pray this. Give us each day our daily bread. Oh, I got the perfect song for that one. Hit it, Greg. 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 It's a cup with a handle. Play the song, Greg. Yeah. Now we're cooking. You say holla, I say ciabatta. You say sourdough, I say soda. Chala, ciabatta, sourdough, soda. Just don't forget I'm gluten free. What a prayer, Kellen. What a prayer. Uh huh. Just to be clear, God wasn't saying to only pray for different kinds of bread. Jesus was telling us to be open and honest about the needs in our life. God wants to hear about it all. Jesus finished his prayer this way. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Let's be honest. We all make bad choices from time to time. We all sin. We all need forgiveness. So Jesus reminded us to go to God for that forgiveness and to ask him to help us make wiser choices. And also, we should be willing to forgive people when they've sinned against us. Love it. Love it. How about I sing one more tune summing up the whole shebang? I don't think that's really necessary. Hit it, Greg. 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 I'm awake. Oh. Coffee. Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. a baby who's awesome you are who gives me what I need you do who forgives me that's you cause it's just what you do remind me to love people how you've shown you love me who feels better that's me cause I talk to you I'm not gonna lie that was lovely I know Let's hear that whole prayer one more time. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. That's beautiful, Kellen. Hey, Greg, how about I take you out for a fresh loaf of bread to go with that mug of Joe, huh? <laughs> All right, catch you later, Kellen. Bye, Mel. I'm Audi. I didn't mean right now, Greg. I meant after the show. So, what'd you guys think of the Lord's Prayer? I think it's great. I've already got it memorized. Ready? Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Sounds great. But you know, you don't have to say it all proper like that. God will totally understand even if you don't pronounce each word perfectly. You don't even have to use the exact words Jesus used. So we don't just recite this prayer? Oh, uh, well, you can if you want, but you can totally pray it in your own words too. We can tell God he's awesome, ask for him to provide for our needs, ask for forgiveness when we mess up, and tell him everything we need help with. It's important to speak from the heart. I just think that it's amazing that the creator of the universe actually loves to hear from us. You're right about that. Hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. Ah, no problem. It's what I do. I'll see you guys. Yeah, I'm glad we learned how to pray today. I'm going to need all the help I can get to play the pivotal role of tree number two, right? Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Well, your enunciation is going to be leather, great. Leather, hey, what are your red lines? Leather, anyway? yellow I don't have any lines. I'm a tree. Yoda met Yeti on the plains of Serengeti. Yoda you, met Yeti on the plains you, of Serengeti. Yoda met Yeti. Reveal the, the question. Oh, how do you pray to God? Do you sing or whisper? 
Do you pray in your head or pronounce everything with perfect enunciation and spizzle? Do you pray inside or outside, in the dark or upside down in a tree? However you pray, talk about it with each other. Yeah, hey, hey, learn something from each other. And we'll see you next time on The, the So and So Show. show. The So and So, so, so Show. Am I saying that right? Yes. The, the So, so yeah. and oh, Chew Your oh, Words. Chew Your Words. So and So, so, so Show. show. <laughs> No problem, come on, coffee man! <laughs> Inexplicably okay. mimicking him hiccuping. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>